Hey everyone, Pulsar here. And in today's video, I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite mag caps that I've come across over the past year. Some of them you might know about, some of them are pretty much hidden gems. Personally, for me, I think that these apps are game changing. They just are really beneficial to me and what I do, and I just enjoy using them. I've of course timed on the video, so feel free to just skip to an app that you've never heard of before. Other than that, I think that if you watch the video, you might gain something out of the apps you already use. So yeah, let's get into the video. The most popular Mac cap that I've seen people show off as well is Alfred because it is probably the best app that you can download. Probably the number one app you should download on your Mac. It is just so useful and it makes Mac just a hundred times better. It's basically a spotlight replacement and that's what Alfred does. It takes advantage of your spotlight and it adds on to it. So for example, I have it configured to command spacebar. And when I do that, as you can see, it brings up this uh, Alfred prompt. So for example, I could just type in apples and hit space so we have search google for apple search amazon for apple search wikipedia so for example i could use my keyboard or i could press command one and it searches google for apples and yeah apple united kingdom comes up and we also have apple here as you see i use alfred a lot it says average 50 times per day there are some days where i just use alfred a ton and the great thing about alfred is that you know you just feel like a boss just you know using shortcuts opening up files so if i press spacebar again i could open up a file I, mean, I don't think I have anything. Oh, there you go. File.js from Node.js. Yeah, it's really annoying how it indexes Node modules, but either way, it's really handy. You can do a lot of things. Open up apps, of course. And it's basically Spotlight, but just way better. It's on steroids, pretty much. If you don't really use it, you're missing out. There's also another one that I've heard of called Raycast. That one's also pretty cool. But yeah, that is Alfred for Mac. Next, we have a great app that I absolutely love, probably the one I use a lot because I like to uninstall apps for some reason. But either way, this app is a must if you install apps from the app store, from the internet. If you just have a lot of apps and you like to clean up, that's the name of the app as well, App Cleaner. So the reason is because for something like Mac, you can't really just go up to an app, right click and then, you know, uninstall. The way Apple tells you to uninstall apps is just like dragging it to your trash. But just dragging that is only gonna drag, or well, it's only gonna delete the actual app. But then there's tons of other things that are related to Chrome. For example, caches, some like user settings that they don't really store inside the app's content because the app is just the app. So what you would need is something like App Cleaner. Now, for example, let's say I want to uninstall uh, Visual Studio Code. So I'll just um, hover over here and wow, 1.62 gigabytes. Let's say I went and uninstalled Visual Studio Code just by, you know, right clicking and moving it to the bin. If you look at how much it is, this is only 500 megabytes. But me uninstalling it from here, it has some like cache. So if you're here, we could look at the cache is only two megabytes, but it's fine. Those can get really big, especially with browsers. And yeah, I could just like click and remove. I'm not going to do that because Visual Studio is very important. But yeah, if you want to do like some bulk uninstalling, you could just scroll through the list. You click on like Logitech, for example, Visual Studio Code, Parcel. There are tons of um, apps you could you know, save a lot of uh, storage with by uninstalling. And yeah, and the great thing about having something like App Cleaner is that there are some free trials out there for apps that even if you uninstall, so you move it to the bin and you come back and install it, they already know if I use the free trial, for example. So I always like to just uninstall the app and then reinstall it. And yeah, it's just like brand new, which is always great. I recommend you install it, like just have it. It's really handy. And yeah, next up, we have a incredible app. Called Mackie. So Mackie is, uh, you know, in simple terms, just a clipboard manager, and it just works. It really, it works really nice on Mac. And best thing, it's free. It's open source, and who doesn't love open source? So I'll show you how it works. If we look over here, if we just, if I do a Shift Command C, I believe that's the default um, keyboard shortcut. But if you just do that, it, you know, opens up in wherever your cursor is, which is really handy. Here are some of the preferences that you can set up. Other than that. It's pretty simple. There's nothing crazy. I just like how it works and it doesn't really get in the way. It's just there in the background. And yeah, highly recommend it. Next up, we have another free and open source app, which is Rectangle. Now, Rectangle is a window manager that is just incredible. I love it. Now, how Rectangle works is you could snap your window to different displays everywhere, anywhere you want, really. So, for example, I could um, do a control option left, right, with the arrow keys, by the way. And I like how I could do this. So it doesn't fully maximize it. And I just think it looks so cool, especially when you're using something like a terminal. And yeah, highly recommend it. Mac does have it already like built in. So if you hold line on control, it's like a secret part where you can do this. But it just, you know, keyboard shortcuts, nothing better than that. It just snaps. It's really cool. And yeah, I really like it. So next up, we have another app called Image Optim. So this is an image optimizer, which is really handy for like compressing your images and not having them lose too much quality, which is really good because some image compressors can really 
knock down the quality a lot and yeah if you want to just upload something on the web so if you want to have an image on your website and you don't want it to be too heavy because load times are important you want to make sure that it, you don't lose too much quality as well so i'll show you how it works it's really easy to use you simply get an image so if we look at this image it's 2.8 megabytes right now i'm going to drag it onto here so you drag and drop it instantly starts uh, shaving off it and obviously right now it didn't do anything because i have a setting where i preserve a lot of it but if i do lossy minification if i drag again it takes a while and now it's on under two megabytes but yeah it just works really well and i highly recommend it next up we have my favorite app that i use all the time it is item 2 now item 2 is just a simple terminal however you could customize it really nicely so if we open it up Let's go to the options. Now we have a lot of preferences by set up here, but for example, my profile, I have a really basic, I barely even change anything, but I just change the font. You could do the same thing in the stock terminal app that comes on Mac, but that one's just like, I don't know, it feels clunky. So if I bring it up, if I go terminal, it just feels really clunky. I don't have anything on it, so that's why it looks weird. Yeah, it just feels really clunky and um, use an item. It's really nice, like set up some cool options. So for example, you can have like, showing your cpu usage your memory usage um, right in the terminal and yeah it's really important for me to have a nice and customizable terminal as i use it every single time and it's the most popular one that i've seen so i understand and recommend it now since we are already on the topic on terminals we should obviously look at something called homebrew now homebrew is a package manager for mac os well if you don't know what package manager is it's essentially a app installer where you just type in your commands and the package you want to install or the app or cli or tool and it'll just install it without you having to go to a website installing the dmg files for example for mac and just double click on it drag into applications even though it's easy to you know just install on mac it's still a tedious process and i'd rather just do it from your terminal without any hassle and yeah homebrew is really popular it has like nearly all of the apps i use so on homebrew you could do some really cool things you could do brew ls and what this does it just shows all the different casks that i've installed so casks is basically an application so if i look at audacity that's basically the app so when i go to install it it will install the app it'll move it to my applications folder um, with ease and in another case we have like something called neovim um, which i've alias to vi but you could do neovim and it's installed and i didn't have to go to the website or anything i just did a brew install and i'll show you neovim if i do brew install neovim it's gonna say to reinstall it's already installed up to date but either way it's really handy it's a must have if you're using your uh, mac for development i think everyone knows about homebrew that um, is in programming other than that even if you're just a average joe i think you'll still benefit a lot from installing casks so for example install a firefox or google chrome that is homebrew highly recommend and yeah next up we have another apple only app where you could have on your iphone your mac and your watch this is parcel now parcel is just a simple delivery tracking app it's really handy because i like to just know where you know something i ordered is that i normally get from like somewhere that's not amazon so let's say you ordered something before you could go back to it and you'll see like you know the steps it took to get your parcel now for example i can show you something like ikea so it was delivered by dpd uk hold on that it's really simple it has a nice menu bar icon as well where you can just like you know refresh and take a look at it every now and then but other than that highly recommend it Finally, we have my favorite app as well, TickTick. Now, TickTick is a to-do list app. It's really popular. I think that it's really cool for Mac because it has this nice menu bar icon. I think that it's just like being there encourages me to actually do my tasks. But even though I don't have that many tasks, I still enjoy having a to-do list. And it also has a nice Pomo focus. So for example, I could start the Pomodoro timer, which I enjoy using because it helps me focus and just be more disciplined, I guess, because I can't really focus on a task that much. Um, unfortunately tick tick is just a great to do app i have it on my phone as well and the cool thing is it's cross-platform so that if i ever decide to you know move away from apple or something i'm not going to be uh, stuck and i guess on that note i could tick off this task finally which is good all right i hope you enjoyed this video maybe you got something out of it if you did feel free to leave a like subscribe if you want to see some more content in the future other than that really appreciate you watching it all the way i'm still you know trying to make some more videos and yeah your support will be greatly appreciated and any feedback you have of course leave a comment i've also linked everything in the description of course so feel free to just go to the actual page and download them or use homebrew i've used homebrew for every single one of these apps to download and i recommend you start using homebrew but either way thank you for watching and have a great day